Hey guys, Double Wide 6 here, and I'm talking a little bit about swapping out an engine. I already have an engine that I just swapped, and uh, I already made a first video to this that is called Considerations to Swapping an Engine. So if you didn't see that, you want to go to my channel and find that video. And now on this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about the wiring because uh, I went from a Kawasaki engine over to a Briggs engine. And uh, the reason I did that, basically what it boils down to is you can buy a fairly cheap V-twin engine that will power a zero turn tractor uh, by buying a tractor, like a riding mower, that has a blown transmission. So on the ground I got a transmission that we can take a look at in another video. But anyhow, uh, you know, that's why I'm switching engines and basically I put this one on because this one uh, kind of fit the bill. So the first thing that we need to do is talk about wiring. It's not really that difficult of a project, but I imagine every brand of engine is going to be a little bit different. So the first thing you need to do is figure out what the wiring is either on your engine or from your tractor. I got lucky because mine was listed online and in the book I have for this Gravely tractor. I'll show you that. This is the book from Gravely and on the engine they show you that there's four wires oil pressure fuel solenoid regulator magneto kill and um, these wires blue white yellow red purple white black those are the colors that are coming from the tractor so you know basically we know on the tractor like the blue white is going to be for oil pressure and the yellow red is going to be for fuel solenoid Purple is going to be for regulator. White and black is going to go to magneto kill. Um, I find with tractor engines and a lot of electronics in general, the colors of the wires mean absolutely nothing. So, you know, don't assume that you, you found a black wire and that's your ground or a red wire and that's going to be hot. Okay, so you got to kind of follow the, di the, the schematics or wiring diagrams. You can look these up uh, in the, when you look up the engine code, you can find the illustrated parts list and it'll tell you, you know, you should be able to find a wiring schematic for your particular equipment. Once you figure out what the wires do from the wiring schematic, the next thing that I did is I actually figured out what that means. Okay, so uh, one of the wires says oil sensor. So that wire runs on the engine, it's going to go to the oil sensor. So here's an oil filter, here's the oil pressure sensor. So if you don't have good oil pressure, it'll light up a light on your tractor. Now you might have uh, an engine that has the oil sensor on it, but your tractor might not be wired for an oil sensor alarm or light. Uh, so you don't really need to wire that wire. This light here has to do with my oil pressure. So that'll light up if, I'm, if I don't have oil pressure. The next wire on this thing that we look at, um, one of the wires on the engine goes to the regulator. So on this Kawasaki engine, there's a regulator right here. And the job of the regulator is uh, to take electricity, DC power, uh, generated uh, up top in the stator from the flywheel spinning. It's going to take that energy and it's going to use it to charge the battery and run the PTO. When you engage the PTO that'll engage the blades. Um, the next wire on here, one of them is going to go to the coil kill. So around the flywheel you're going to have a coil up in there and uh, that wire is going to basically ground out. It's the kill wire for the coil. And then the last wire is for the solenoid. And that, when I say solenoid, that's a fuel solenoid. And uh, that's a little hard to see on this Kawasaki. So we'll go over to the Briggs. And down here, you have your fuel solenoid. One of the wires 
runs back to the harness, the solenoid wire, and the other wire is the ground wire. And what that does is when you kill the engine or turn off the ignition switch, there's a little solenoid or plunger in here that shuts and that stops fuel from pumping into the carburetor and uh, it, it all it's like an anti backfire mechanism so those are basically the the four wires that you'll be looking at so if you can identify what the wires are on the tractor then you have to identify which are which on the tractor engine so now I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the wiring harnesses. Alright, here's the wiring harness on an engine. This is the engine that I pulled. And basically what you have here is four wires coming through. You could have up to six wires in here. And the four wires, as we just went through, one of them goes to oil sensor, one goes to regulator, one goes to the fuel solenoid, and one goes to the rectifier. So that's your four wires. And, you know, there's a... Um, kind of a mirror image plug that'll snap into this from your equipment and rather than just taking your new engine and cutting off these wires and wire nutting them uh, you know it's a good idea to possibly try and find and buy a matching plug for your engine they do make aftermarket plugs that'll fit exact um, and I don't think they're too expensive it's just like an adapter now for my particular engine that I used I happen to have an extra plug kind of laying around so just like this one here I had an extra plug so I was able to use this um, three of the wires lined up perfect the fourth wire see there's the three bottom and then one there on this plug you'll see there's three on the bottom and there's one centered in the top these two are blanks up top in the corners so really I only had to splice one wire so this is just a harness from a Briggs but it will be an, it, it did snap exactly into the harness from the Gravely tractor that um, I put the new engine on alright so last thing I wanted to mention has to do with Kohler engines because uh, I know a lot of you are probably trying to hook up like a Briggs to a Kohler. The the basic wiring for most of these Kohlers, I was looking into getting a Kohler, so I know that the, the green wire on the Kohler is for the oil sensor. Okay, The orange and red wires on the Kohler go to the fuel solenoid. The violet wire goes to the regulator or the rectifier what they call that thing and uh, the white wire on the Kohler's goes to the magneto and uh, you just need to make sure that when you're picking out an engine uh, you get one that has a strong enough uh, alternator to produce enough amperage to run your PTO so here's the actual tractor harness right there you can see I left that intact and then I modified that Briggs connection uh, and I did a little bit of, of wire splicing to make that work but uh, the nice thing about leaving the factory plug is it matches the diagrams and wiring diagram for the uh, tractor if you ever need it in the future or more importantly someone else does like someone doing the work on the tractor alright guys I'm gonna show you a good technique for splicing wires so I'm dipping the wires in flux, I already got this end dipped, and we're just tinning the end of the wire. And what that means is we're adding solder to the end of the wire. And as you can see it turns nice and silver. I'm going to do both wires that I'm connecting. Once you get both your wires tinned, you're going to take hooks, you're going to hook them actually with a needle nose plier, and then you're going to hook them together. Okay, and then once you get them hooked together, we want to crimp this again with the needle nose pliers. So I'm just going to crimp the end right there so that that's tight, and I'll crimp the other end of this hook. And once you have both ends hooked, dip it in flux and solder it again. 
once you got that thing soldered together it's a, it's a damn near permanent connection this works great with extension cords then you slide shrink wrap into place getting stuck on there there we go and then once you get your shrink wrap on there you're just going to shrink that down using a heat gun so the heat gun takes that shrink wrap and pulls it in nice and tight now this is a really nice connection and it's not going to fail on you but the problem is trying to do this with an engine in the way and all the little things around an engine it's very difficult type of connection to do so I did not use this type of connection although this might work really well for other projects like extension cords or broken drill plug or something like that alright the next way that you can connect wires if you want is using a wire nut so you twist around the wires and wire nut it together. However, I wouldn't recommend this type of connection on a lawnmower because of all the rattling and the cap could fall off. Uh, to make this better, you could solder that, tin it up, and then put on your cap. And to make sure the cap doesn't fall off, you could tape it. But that is still a pain as well. The next connection that works pretty well for this type of application is a crimped fitting. Okay, So with this you take your two wire ends and you feed one into the connector like that and you're going to take a good crimping pliers. Now these you can, you can crimp if you want but these are real cheap strippers. You really need a good crimping anvil. So if you look at these pliers, these things are made to crimp. It has this nicely formed um, uh, crimping head on there. So what we can do is just line that up like this, hold it in place, and you don't even have to squeeze that hard. With a good plier, it crimps solid as can be. So that's one side, and then you could take your other wire that you need connected or spliced, you're going to push that in there and do the same. Um, this works out pretty well. It's just a little bit tough to maneuver this inside, you know, an engine bay on a tractor. And we'll give that a good squeeze. I'm actually going to put a link to some really good crimpers like this in the description below the video. But you can see that thing is tight you know it's not going anywhere so that's a, that's a good mechanical connection but I even have one more that is what I actually used and I really like this system this system here is called a quick splice and basically you can feed two wires through here and then you take a good pliers and you you crimp that plate down and you can see there's like little open slots they'll they'll split the wire and uh, basically that plate will conduct electricity so the current will flow through that so let me show you how this one works this is the one I used because it's easiest just to reach in down behind the engine and just squeeze this thing in you don't have to get the pliers in there sideways and you have plenty of room to get these in and these are a pretty tough mechanical connection so here's how it works we're going to take a wire and uh, we'll cut it here all right you don't have to strip the ends so that'll save you a step there um, one of these you can see you can't see through that left hand side the right side you can see all the way through so I can push this one in here like that and this one will go all the way through like that and once you have them in place just make sure nothing moves and you, you take a pliers and you take that that splicing plate going to turn this so you guys can see and we're going to give it a squeeze and that's all it takes and if we take a look at it that that plate is now flush with the plastic and because that's conducting electricity there's a little flap that you shut and that holds it all 
in place. All right, so we got one, two, three different types of splices. Now I'm thinking that we're gonna put this thing in the vise and we're gonna give it a yank and we'll see which one fails first. That'll be fun. So we have three different splices. We're hooked up in the vise. I'm just taking a, actually a spring with a hook on it and that's a splice right there. And I'm gonna try and pull straight back and hopefully not fall over. Well, I really couldn't have guessed what was going to happen, but uh, I thought the, the wire actually broke. So the one that failed of the three, if there was equal pressure, was the quick splice. But it did take a fair amount of pressure, so... <laughs> uh, well, that's the one that failed. All right, we have two left. The soldering connection with the heat shrink and the quick connect. So I'm gonna straighten this thing out and pull straight back. And it looks like our soldering connection lost there. So anyhow, all three of those should be adequate for what we're doing here. So anyhow, I'm double wide six and uh, I am by no means an expert on this stuff. I'm just a backyard garage mechanic here. And uh, a lot of this stuff uh, I had to do research to figure out. And I just thought I'd make a video for you a little bit on wiring and, and also on selecting an engine to repower a piece of equipment. So hopefully this thing helps you out. Um, I'm going to put a link on the bottom of how to get to those crimping pliers on Amazon. And uh, if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And it would be great to have you subscribe as well. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.